Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Dive Into Diet. I'm with the star of the show, Lucas Smith. <laughs> Lucas Smith. Smith. <laughs> I changed my name last week. It's fine. Schmidt. <laughs> Schmidt. Yeah. My, I mean, how, 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 how did I do that? I don't know. Maybe you need some more caffeine. Maybe I need some supplements for performance. Perhaps. You know? Perhaps. Well, which, conveniently, we're talking about today. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about supplements uh, for performance. That's right. Uh, so, Lucas, why don't you go through a few of those for sure. us? Sure. Uh, we'll talk about uh, caffeine first, since Let's I mentioned it. it. Yeah. So, caffeine, that's the most common one. So, yeah. we're going to talk about three today. Caffeine... Two of them, not as well known. Caffeine is quite famous. You know what? I, what's interesting is I would not think of caffeine as a supplement. I would think of it as a stimulant. Not yeah, well, it is. It is a stimulant. Um, I guess I would consider it a supplement just because it's a substance we introduce to our bodies to elicit a positive response. There you go. So that's what I consider. Or a supplementation, meaning not substitute for, but addition to just kind of improve our performance generally. Um I take caffeine in the form of coffee or tea, uh, and I take it because, and this is something most people know, it improves short term, it improves your focus, kind of make, kind of wakes you up, helps you get moving. Um, some studies show it improves athletic performance temporarily because it stimulates the release of um, cortisol and adrenaline, not a mm -hmm. lot. We're not talking you drink coffee and you're going to get an adrenaline rush or anything, but small amounts here, manageable, safe amounts. And cortisol gets a bad rap. It's nicknamed the stress hormone, which it is. It, but cortisol is a naturally occurring hormone in the body that we all need to survive. Yep. Um, it's our sort of our survival instinct hormone, one of them. There's so many hormones. But cortisol is, is highly elevated in the mornings when you wake up for a reason. We wake up and we need to start working or we need to go do something. And so our body, while we sleep... It, as we awake, it releases, so cortisol levels are pretty high in the morning. And caffeine generally um, works best an hour after you wake up. Don't okay. drink. People go, but I need my coffee right when I wake up. No, you don't. Your cortisol levels are at the highest they're going to be for the day when you first wake up. But after an hour, they start to come down a little bit. So if you want to kind of keep them up and ride that wave a little longer, that's when introducing coffee or caffeine is the best i'm not suggesting you take caffeine pills okay sometimes you think supplements oh i have to take a sure yeah and that's that's yeah sometimes that is but i i mean you can get it naturally in tea or coffee um there's probably some other natural sources out there but those are the two most well known and um it uh improves your circulation temporarily um and uh so that's sort of a general reason why i like caffeine now there is such a thing as too much caffeine and then if you take too much caffeine, you're going to get stressed, you're going to feel anxious and jittery, and you get that kind of that icky feeling in your chest or your stomach maybe, or you get shaky. Um, and that's, that's how you know. Generally, the healthy recommended amount um, is in forms of coffee, one to three cups a day. Okay. I wouldn't exceed three cups um, have if you, you're wanting ideal dose. Have you seen any like – because I, I know I, I'm – I have this a little bit of resistance. So, like, mm -hmm. the more you drink, the more resistant to it. Does that have any effect on cortisol levels in terms of keeping them? Um, that the research is sketchy on that. I've actually, I actually, it's a, it's kind of inconclusive. But the the logical prevailing theory is, yeah, if you drink, you will start to develop an immunity to the caffeine effects, just okay. like any other drug. Right. Caffeine could be classified. I think it is classified as a drug technically. But you have to take more and more to elicit the same response so people tend to become caffeine addicts by consuming too much and then the next time they consume it they don't get the same buzz so they add just a little bit more before you know it you're drinking 10 cups a day yeah which is not good for you right so if you want to increase the eff effectiveness of your caffeine without increasing to an unhealthy level the best thing to do is cut back to one cup for a few days in the morning or I would recommend in the morning to avoid that withdrawal headache. You're mm -hmm. still getting enough. Um, and then if maybe, or maybe do that for a week or just enough time for your body to sort of not get that full. And then if you have two cups, you'll might feel it more. You mm. might be like, Oh, I feel this again. Oh, nice. It's sort of a cycle. You can cycle on and cycle off. If you come completely off caffeine, cold turkey, you will kind of, you'll, you'll probably get a headache. Oh, there's no question. Yeah. You'll have some headache. You'll have some withdrawal symptoms. Not like 
convulsions or anything crazy, but you will have some discomfort. Um, you could expect that. So, um, all right. So we got uh, what's the next one here? Next, uh, next one for is uh, it's an acronym GABA. Okay. G A B A, which stands for gamma amino butyric acid. So GABA is a naturally occurring neurotransmitter in your brain. And there are two, there's more than two, but the two I want to talk about is GABA and glutamate, okay? They work together to keep your brain Goldilocks, not too hot, not too cold, just right. Um, GABA calms things down, glutamate riles things up. That's sort of the layman's terms, okay? You want to go speak to a neurosurgeon and get more clinical language, you can. But that's the layman's terms of what they do. I had a psychiatrist describe GABA to me as a traffic cop in your brain. He, he directs traffic. He keeps things from running too quickly. Okay. So, And you might think, well, why do I want that? I want my brain working quick. Well, if your brain works too quick, you get very stressed and you get anxiety. That's called anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> so when your brain, you have racing thoughts or you get upset or you feel you know you just feel like you're in a hurry or you're stressed and chronically that's it's called anxiety so um you can take gaba in a supplement form your brain makes it okay you would go nuts without it quite literally you would like lose your mind but you can take it it usually comes in a powder form okay um it's virtually i say virtually tasteless it is not fully tasteless it doesn't taste bad um i mix it in coffee though and then you, you can't taste it. If you mix it in plain water, it dissolves very easily. It tastes sort of like you ever drank hose water as a kid? You know, drank <laughs> out of the water hose. It's not really a bad taste. It's just kind of like, there's something else here. <laughs> what is that? I cannot quite place it. That's what I would describe GABA water tasting like. Um, and I take it, actually, I like taking it with coffee, too, because we talked about caffeine as a stimulant, but could trigger some anxiety. Yep. Ca caffeine can trigger anxiety. GABA kind of works to balance that caffeine out. So you can reap the stimulant effects in your heart and your and your focus, but not become too jittery. It's so. interesting because I would have assumed that you would want to take something like GABA at night to you could. relax it's, you, mm -hmm. similar to like a magnesium. Yeah. Um, but you're saying to kind of balance out the other, you know, yeah. supplement. You can take it. Um, oh, I just kicked the thing. I need some GABA. Uh, you can take GABA, I think, any time. The main thing you want to do is speak to your doctor if you're going to try it because it could interact, especially if you're on anxiety medication or depression medication. It can interact with those. I, the, the research, it doesn't suggest any severe interactions. There's no, like, big red flags with GABA. It's pretty yep. – and to my knowledge, to my knowledge, there are no other known side effects of taking GABA. If you take too much, uh, which I've taken too much before, um, accidentally – you get what it's, it's similar to if you ever take a niacin, a niacin yeah. flush. You get like slightly itchy in yeah. your skin, and you might have a mild hot flash. Not like an extreme one, just you might be like, ooh, it's toasty in here all of a sudden. Um, and that just means you've, you've taken a little too much. But the dosage on the, if you buy it in supplement form, the dosage is usually pretty small. The recommended dosage on the back, you just follow those instructions. Um, it... It inhibits glutamate. So they, those two, I talked about glutamate earlier, those two sort of um, play with each other, and they kind of compete with each other in your brain at all times, glutamate and GABA do. So a lot of times people with chronic anxiety have got too much glutamate dominating, and that's why they're, they're wound up and nervous and upset. So I really like GABA as a more, a more natural way to cope with anxiety before i go get a prescription right um because there's a there's most psychiatrists don't they don't like to prescribe um a lot of anxiety medications but they do because it's it's the best short-term now solution when you know xanax is it's kind of a sedative almost it's it's not great to take it but if you're having an anxiety attack that's the best thing you can do right you know, I, well, right one of the best things you could speak to your doctor but but GABA is a nice sort of take a little every day, to maybe naturally help solve that problem. Out of curiosity, and then we'll or go, mitigate that problem. Then. We'll um, we'll go to the third one here in a second. But do you, people need to take glutamate for maybe people who need to get going? Like that's is that a good question. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I actually looked. I researched that question actually. Yeah. Um, it's less common 
that you would need think. more glutamate. It, like for example, coffee stimulates glutamate receptors. So that's why like these stimulant things, people take Red Bull, things like that. Um, they're already getting some glutamate stimulation. Okay. So, and I think there's a lot of natural stimulators for glutamate more than GABA. That makes so much so, sense. Like blue light, things that alert you, wake you. So we already have a, we're a very busy society. And yeah. so we got glutamate like, most of the time. Now, there is such a thing as glutamate deficiency. Yeah. But that's a chemical mental disorder. You've got to be diagnosed by a psychiatrist or, a, you know, a physician for that so super interesting all right we got one one more, more. one more let's do it citrulline malate citrulline malate it is a naturally occurring amino acid in the body but um not in massive amounts so you can get it in an extract form as citrulline malate you can just take it usually in a powder form they come in pill form so does gaba by the way they come in pill form but i like powders um Citrulline malate, when you extract it, they usually pull it out of watermelon. It occurs at a high level in watermelon, interestingly enough. Um, that does not mean the supplement has sugar, though. The supplement itself, citrulline malate, is a pure extract from generally watermelon. They probably get it from other plants, too, but that's, I think, the main source. What does it do? It's a, um, it's a vasodilator. Okay. So it dilates your blood vessels. It can short-term lower your blood pressure, not in a bad way. Uh, in a in a healthy way it um improves your athletic performance it increases oxygen uptake into your muscles and it stimulates the production of nitric oxide so so is citrulline malate a form of citrulline or or is that like one yeah they're um yeah i've because i've heard supplements called different things l citrulline okay. or malate i don't know if i've seen malate by itself I think it's just a type. It's the form that it comes in. And okay. that's, that's the form that I take, the form I've researched the most, so I know the most about. Um, but um, it's a precursor to nitric oxide. Yep. And you've heard with nitric oxide is like a buzzword in health, anti-aging, all these areas, athletic performance primarily. Yeah. Um, it uh, Nitric oxide helps with oxygen, VO2 max. And so they've done studies with citrulline malate, and in the studies people – on the placebo um, versus the citrulline malate group performs slightly better in, in cardiovascular, um, high cardiovascular output exercise like sprinting and things like that. Weightlifting, it's good for weightlifting. I take it actually before a show, if I'm in a theater show and I have to dance and sing a lot. So you're taking that like 30 minutes before? Yeah, generally, or even right at the top of show. Yeah, I, I'm. I have it in a big bag. It's pretty cheap. Very cheap to buy citrus. Actually, all of these supplements are very inexpensive. Another reason I like them. GABA is cheap. Caffeine is <laughs> very cheap. <laughs> Citrulline malate. I have a big old bag of it. Yeah, it's, it's just like several hundred servings. You do a scoop. Sometimes I do too. Mix it in a bottle of water. It does have a taste. Not a bad one. It tastes sour like lemon. It's not sweet at all. So if you're, if you, if you're averse to sour taste... Mix it in a smoothie or something. It's going to be like you juice a lemon into your smoothie or mm. something like that. Um, but it has an acidic taste. Okay, It's not it's not terrible. I, I like it by itself. I actually mask other supplements flavor with it because it's got a strong sort of tart taste. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's a great performance enhancer. It doesn't really have any known side effects to my knowledge, like severe side effects. Again, always inform a doctor that you're going to try it, though, just in case. Um, I do know there's one, if you take medication for blood pressure, you should either avoid it or at least tell your physician you're going to try citrulline malate because it's a vasodilator. So anytime you're messing with blood pressure and you're already taking um, blood pressure medication or heart medication, things yeah. like that, you really do want to inform your physician. Okay. That doesn't mean it's 100% no-go, but it's definitely not something you just, yeah, willy-nilly, let me just pop some of this in my water. You know, with my with my blood pressure medication, we see what happens. Don't do that. Do not do that. Well, so. uh, real real quick, you mentioned the powder versus capsule. Mm -hmm. Why do you prefer powder? Any any? Is it just you? Because I can control the dose better. Okay. I powder. I can measure the dose, and it's and generally, generally, you get more for your money. Okay, that's fair. Because when you take capsules. They come in a bottle, and there's X amount, but they can only pack so many grams or milligrams in a capsule. Okay, so with a powder, I take like a gram at a time. 
which is a large dose. It's a thousand milligrams of grams of citrulline malate. I'll take a gram or two grams um, per day mm. if I'm using it. I don't use it every day. I yeah. use it before strenuous activity. Um, so powders I like because you can buy them in bulk. Um, and that's almost any supplement you can find in powder form. And you save money in the long run because nice. you're buying a lot. You're getting a lot more. You're, when you buy in pill form, you're paying for the capsule and you're paying for air because the bottle, those pills stack up, but there's air in between all those pills. Makes so much sense. So it's like buying a bag of potato chips. You know, you're paying for air as well in that bag, right? Because you ever open this, a bag of chips and you're uh, like, it's so disappointing. There's like half, <laughs> less than half of the bag is taken up by the chips. It's mostly air. Um, it's not quite that extreme with supplements, but it, it, I mean, you're paying for space. Yeah. And if you measured out dose for dose, how much am I getting per? Cool thing about Amazon is they'll give you per unit price. They don't just like, so if you look at, say you wanted to buy GABA pills on Amazon, it'll say the price for the whole bottle, but then in parentheses, it'll say per unit. And they're talking about the pill. That's what I look at when I buy a supplement generally is how much am I paying per pill? Interesting. Because that's really the real cost. Right, something that's fifty dollars versus twenty dollars, you might think, oh, I'm gonna pay twenty dollars. Well, there's probably ten servings in that twenty dollar thing versus a hundred servings in the fifty dollar thing. Right. So per dollar, you get a lot more powder. There's a long answer. Powder, you generally get more, and you can control the dose. That's awesome, man. So yeah, it's a great tip. Yeah. Well, Lucas, uh, thanks for diving in with us today, man. No problem, guys, and thank you for diving in with us today. And as always, we're gonna see you guys next time for another episode of Dive Into Diet. Don't go away